Yo, 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 hey guys, it's poppin'. Jock Slade here, back with another unboxing. And today, it's not just me on the channel. I got the uh, the gastronaut, uh, the television food connoisseur, Adam Richmond here to join me. My man. An honor, sir. Oh, I appreciate you coming in. Big, big uh, fan. So today, we're gonna unbox a new pair of kicks that I just bought, but after that, we're actually gonna go to the storage unit, check out the storage. Okay, so this is a... Uh, I feel like uh, Charlie, you've got the Wonka ticket right now. <laughs> uh, this man is a sneakerhead, and I know you probably wouldn't know that because on all the shows that you see him on, they only film him from here up. Yes. Which is some nonsense. Well, <laughs> not if you love handles, because then you're like, I'm glad. But no, the truth is, it is it has been a, a passion that has been building, and guys like you really have been the divining rod for guys like me. This is like the definition of like first time, long time. Like, like I've been watching your stuff for a long time, oh, and, man. and then, you know, guys like me learn from guys like you. So this is a big deal for every fledgling sneakerhead. There you go, I appreciate that. So the feeling is mutual. So I picked a sneaker that I thought had a little bit of history. It's kind of new and it's kind of old. So I just wanted to give us something, you know, that we can put our hands on and give you a look at. So this is the Tinker Hatfield Air Jordan 3. Uh, you obviously see Tinker's signature there. Uh, the man put the bubble you know, in the outsole. Come the man on. who put the bubble in the outsole. And speaking of that, one of your favorite kicks is the Air Max 1. So I'm actually rocking my kid robot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So as we speak, I love that you were like nice flex. Yeah, yeah. Light flex here. Uh, he just walks into the room with kid robot Air Max ones on like it's nothing. So that's cool. <laughs> I get it. I get it. So where did where did the love for the Air Max one kind of come from? I think that it's just these silhouettes. You know, I'm I'm 45, so I remember like you go like seeing the first Bo Jacksons, the first Cross Trainers. I have the have the first Bread One J ones. Nice. So I think that those were just like silhouettes that I always liked and they sort of remind me of my youth and growing up in Brooklyn. And even the threes to a different degree, I think are not, I'm not accustomed to ones quite so beautiful but, or luxurious. <laughs> but I think that like the SB Dunks, the J1, and to be fair, like Jordans, like maybe one through three were kind of were really iconic to me. Maybe yeah, the yeah, six yeah. is a little, but there's a little bit of Brooklyn nostalgia. You I know, the that. West 4th Street courts and the revolution, you know, the Jumpman posters yeah, yeah, and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So for the three, so this is obviously not the three that we all knew and grew up with, and no. one that we all love. Uh, it adds the, the Nike swoosh there. And actually, hold on, I'll get the, an original pair in here just so people can have uh, some oh, comparison, some contrast and compare. So here's uh, a super beat up pair that I wear all the time <laughs> versus uh, the the new Tinker, quote unquote, new Tinker uh, Air Jordan 3. So it gets some love to the camera there so they can see them. And the the big differences are obviously that they added, they added the swoosh here. Um, and they have the elephant print too. And they have the elephant print there, elephant print here. So Tinker decided that for this shoe that Jordan could live on his own. That was part of the thing of why the Nike swoosh was removed because Tinker thought that Jordan was a big enough brand that he didn't need the Nike, Nike. swoosh to, to, to support him. And then this is also the Air Jordan 3 is the first shoe with the Jumpman logo on it. Oh. So the one had the Nike Air and then it had the Wings logo. The two had the Wings logo. And then the three was the first one that we saw the Jumpman obviously there on the tongue. So these actually sat and uh, they didn't sell out which is something that usually happens for Jordan sneakers um, but that, that kind of leads me to the question of like hype versus the things you love do you feel like you're more caught up in like the hype sneakers or are they like just like things you love I think that I think for the most part it's the things I love I've got size 13 extraordinarily flat feet so it has to still look good on my feet right right be comfortable that was like the reason we talked about like why I can't really rock Yeezys and stuff like this so for me it's got to be comfort it's also got to be versatile like I yeah. Certain things were certain colorways are really dope, but it's like I got nothing I can rock that with. Right. These look like a print slipper. The Tinker Threes that dropped in 2018 versus these, what was the big difference? So there was more of the color. So this this is the same shoe, so to speak, that dropped uh -huh. in 2018, the Tinker version. Okay. This is just the different colors. So this is more like the black. I think the Tinker one originally was white and red. Okay. And this is just black. Obviously, they changed up the materials a little bit. I think this is suede or nubuck on here, which gives it obviously a more luxurious 
luxurious feel. Uh, some leather or pleather, I imagine, there. And obviously, <laughs> the 3M pops. And the one thing that really pops out for this one is like the gold accents and gives it a more, like you said, kind of more of a luxurious feel. Um, something that I want to talk to on the food side of things is like, what are some of the small things that you can do to kind of change up, like maybe just like your basic burger? If you're going to make, make, make your great basic question. burger. I think number one, the quality of your meat. Because if you look at some of the really great burgers, they always say it's like fresh cracked salt, fresh cracked pepper, you know, like good ground sea salt. But if you're using a good meat blend, and then you can use like an heirloom tomato instead of just sort of regular beefsteak tomatoes and have a different color, a different texture. Yeah. Watercress instead of lettuce. Instead of the fancy brioche bun, you may want to use a Parker House plain old, you know, Martin's potato roll, but change the condiments up a little bit. And I think, you know, to bring it back to sneakers in an interesting way is, you know, we talked about how like luxury is different things to different people. We were yeah. having a discussion about the DMP pack. Yep. They had that beautiful like luxury feel. I feel yeah. the same way about the Kobe 2 Prelude pack. Okay. The one that looks like marble. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that's the beautiful thing that I think for a lot of people, anyone who whose parents say, you know, what are you doing with all these shoes? Let them watch this part on because I think that there is <laughs> there is a versatility to, to kicks now and a kind of attention to detail that yeah. makes them a luxury item beyond the price point. And I yeah. think that you celebrate that. And it's one of the reasons I love watching your stuff is that you can celebrate the little tiny gold accents and how it yeah. can turn a basketball shoe into a piece of footwear. Yeah, and I, I think that's part of the, the storytelling of sneakers. And, uh, you know, obviously you being a food guy, like that tells that story as well. Like food, you can, the way you prepare a plate, the way things are situated on the plate, like that all tells a story as well. And I think it's the same thing with sneakers. You know, you get the, the textures, the materials that you use, the way, the box, the way that it's presented. I mean, even stuff like we were just talking about, like these, like the Spider-Man, like the Spider-Man ones for the movie Into the Spider-Verse, like this box tells a story just exactly. by itself before you even see the shoes. It's like that sort of storytelling, being able to put that into the shoe, it adds depth and it adds, uh, I guess like emotion to it that people don't necessarily get if you're just looking at a sneaker and just like, oh, that's a red shoe, but no, it's red because Tiger wore a red shirt every time he every time he wins on Sunday. That's his red shirt. So telling that story is really really dope. Anyway, the stories the stories are how I got in. We were talking about this. The uh, Pee Wee Herman SB Dunk yeah. was literally uh, my boy Zero has a shop here in LA and he showed it to me and he was like. No, 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 the red Nike tag is the bow tie, the white tongue is the shirt, the gray is the suit, and if you look at the sock liner, it's him wearing it. And then Extra Butter dropped the Death Squad, and, and then the Dornbeckers came out. And then I began learning the stories mm -hmm. behind each shoe and the little homages. And now the Extra Butter did the karaoke, the Lost in Translation yeah. one. Now let me ask you, you have all the food collabs, you have all the cereal ones. Yeah, and yeah, yeah, yeah. Are those corny to a real sneakerhead, or, you know, because, there's a little bit of that whole stay in your lane vibe to people who, <laughs> right? Like, usually those like uh, beignet ones. The beignet ones. So like, I think again, it goes down to like the storytelling and showing like a really true appreciation for something mm -hmm. that was like, that's either a part of your past. So like, if you did a food collab on a sneaker, I feel like it would be true to it. For one, I know you love sneakers. Mm -hmm. And two, I know you love food. And three, I know you love storytelling. So you're able to tell that story through that sneaker in a way that I think that connect with people. But sometimes you get people that just throw stuff together and it's right. just like, it's like, I get what you're doing, but it doesn't have, you have to find a way to make that emotion connect with. I think you have to make it connect with the consumer in a way that, that keeps it on. It's like you, you brought the uh, the uh, the Sockenies with the burger and like- I do, should I go grab Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So so there you go. Why does this mean anything to you at all? Well, so End, who created this, um, I believe they're based out of Newcastle, England, and I was really blessed to um, have a fan base in the UK, which I never anticipated. But again, because it's not overtly hamburgerish, you see the sock liner has the uh, sort of picnic table vibes, the gingham, and the extra laces came in like little ketchup packets. You can see the tongue has the burger on it. And I think it's still like a colorway I could wear, but by the same token, it has just enough of that burger gestalt. This is a little drum roll. What are Jacques Slade's top five food collab shoes? Top five food collab shoes? Uh, I'm so excited to hear this. Yeah, I always wanted that, to ask I mean, this. obviously this, 
this is on the list as well. Like this just, this kind of just resonates with me just one, because I'm a burger fan. And then I'm, I'm falling in love with, with Saucony. I, I, I wasn't the biggest Saucony fan. Mm -hmm. um, over the years, I've kind of started to grow more and more uh, in love with what they do because they use like such good, high quality materials 100%. on their shoes. And it may not be the most popular thing, which is like, whatever, I don't like, that doesn't matter to me. I think that I'm kind of following. So like, this is obviously dope. I have the, the beignets, which definitely resonated with me. Um, just because one, I love beignets. So, so that's hard so, it's, it's hard not to love beignets, that's true. Um, but then also just like, I know the guys at Sneaker Politics. I met them a few years ago at All Star and like, I know how much they love sneakers and for them to be able to kind of show love to their hometown of New Orleans and Cafe de Monde and like how they put like the colors and then I, you guys have powdered seen, sugar. you guys have powdered sugar, you guys have seen the video. Um, and then I tried to make beignets with a mix that they gave me, but that's a whole different story. Very hard to do. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but like those sort of stories just really kind of bring it all together for me and like that that makes it that makes it worth it to me but enough about me I oh no i wanted to hear go. the other three Come no on. no no. i think we no? should go all i right. think we should go to the storage unit okay uh, i will so go to the storage, storage unit. unit storage unit i will i just secretly the sneaker dork in me who so respects your like encyclopedic <laughs> knowledge of this because no. i'm kind of like hoping to find out like some other dope food collabs like i'll tell y'all i didn't even know about this beignet one so he told me about them <laughs> so i'm i don't know if there are any other food i'll, I'll throw a mix one in there that's kind of like a food pack. Uh, I guess cereal is considered food. The Kyrie's? The Kyrie's. So there's the cereal pack that he did uh, with General Mills for the Uncle Drew movie. So it the was Wheaties it one? Was Wheaties, Can I grab Lucky it? Charms. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're, you want to grab Yeah, yeah. This so is we'll like, right <laughs> really, I love this. Even though, obviously, I practice the Jew craft, this is like, this is like a separate Hanukkah in August. <laughs> <laughs> so you guys have seen this. This is the Wheaties, the Uncle Drew. Um, and here's, again, it's all about the storytelling. So they took the traditional Wheaties box so even if I can look here instead of like the nutrition facts it's all like Uncle Drew stats <laughs> so it's like points three point percentage ankles, ankles taken. taken shots scooped and all that stuff and then like the Kyrie and then even young like bloods toasted <laughs> yeah, young bloods, yeah and even I like hear it's like toasted defenders like three ounces and then like instead of like the, the nutrition or whatever like the awards that they win five time all -star. it's all like Kyrie's stats right there like they, they threw on there so like little stuff like that just kind of makes the story telling better like even here 100% sauce per serving like you know all those little small things here at the top broken ankles and broken spirits all a part of a complete breakfast so you've never opened this yeah yeah this has been opened like, here we go yeah so oh my god yeah, so like the weed the miniature weedies box comes with the spoon the the, the Kyrie weedies bowl and then they continue that kind of storytelling here. Look at that, the flakes the in the milk. Yeah. The flakes in the milk on the bottom. Yeah, telling that telling that story there. <laughs> Who knows? And I love that it's also, if you hear it, the, sorry, the food guy in me, it's the same type of plastic that they would use for the cereal. You can even yeah. hear the way it yeah. sprinkles. That's true. Yeah, yeah. And you That's see the catch. and the liner, they even have the the, the flakes. cereal, yeah, like it's all velcroed in. But, but even uh, sounds like that heavy gauge wax. The heavy gauge wax. Oh, that it's, they use. it's velcro. That's yeah, so it's velcro cool. down, so kind of give you that whole cereal look. And the sock liner even has a little bit of the flakes and cereal. Stuff. Yeah, so that's the story. But let's go to the uh, to the storage unit. I want to show you show you a couple things there. Just give you. I feel like it's. I feel like I'm like I'm being a really bad influence on you right now. Like <laughs> you're but, the best bad influence. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I, I think it's, it's it's worth it. It'll give you a you know give you some perspective on things, and you can make your own decisions. What's Not, the silly thing that they always say that they go bad boys ain't no good, but good boys ain't no fun. Like, there you go. All right, let's go to storage. Let's, let's do it. Okay, so this is a. Uh, I feel like uh, Charlie, you've got the Wonka ticket right now. <laughs> this is a. Uh, Here's another, here's another food one, ghost pepper. Yeah, so this is for um, James Harden. They made these for James Harden back in 2016. I have yet to even taste the ghost pepper, so. Don't. Don't? Don't, I've had two. I mean, forget about hickory hole. The ring sting is like. The yeah, ring sting. It's not good. <laughs> this is some kind of shoe. Just outside of storytelling, one of the weirdest shoes I've ever received. Uh-huh. 
is this one from Under Armour. This is what a, is so, that? So this is a basketball <laughs> shoe. It's, the, it's called the Charged BB. Super crazy. This was before pre-Steph Curry. Pre-Steph Curry Under Armour. Okay. I feel like it's almost like a ski boot almost because it's so big. But I kept it because it's just like so crazy and kind of random. This one up here. Oh my gosh. This one, this is an uh, Air Force One they sent me that's all cork. That's when KD won his first championship in Golden State. Uh, I'll they show sent you. it with the ski mask Yeah, too? It, came, it came with the ski mask goggles. It came with a bottle of Dawn. Oh, for, for the champagne yeah, shower. Yeah, it came with an actual bottle of champagne and it came with a, a wine fridge. Oh my God, <laughs> what? Occasion I get a bottle of hot sauce. Yeah, hey man, that, that's just as good. Uh, this is another one of the kicks from the Kyrie pack. Oh my God, mom likes kicks what kicks is not. Oh. Oh, wow. Speaking of, you mentioned the uh, the Kobe preludes. Uh, I don't have the two, but I have I have the five. The five from the, um, the Fade to Black. Mm -hmm. Like that Fade to Black pack. Right. But, Shout out to Brooklyn brand Greats. I see yeah, that Yeah, Greats, there. they're doing their thing too. I really like, really love what they're doing. Send your boy a pair of Greats. <laughs> I see Bobby Flay rocking them all the time. I'm Adam Richmond. Are you ready for a sneaker throwdown? Can we see the, can we see the Nike? Yeah, yeah, the, absolutely. The, the, the pops, oh my God. That is like so class. cool. And again, the cereal on the sock liner. So do you have to come here, like if you want to rock a pair? Yeah, that's and that's the thing about putting them in storage. Like sometimes you forget about like what's in here because they're not in your face all the time. As, as a new Jack in the sneaky game, what are some good like storage solutions or storage like tips you can give? I mean, I try to find like the ones that I'm gonna wear the most often or the newest ones that have kind of come in. Uh -huh. So I kind of rotate through those. Okay. Um, but then like the rest of these are just like the really cool stuff that I have that I know I'm not gonna wear all the time or Ooh. because um, I'm a sneaker guy, there's stuff like I always kind of want to have these on hand mm. in case in case I need them. Maybe it's like a pot that you really love but you just don't use it anymore but it has like some, some like these memories attached to it. So like I'm a big Victor Cruz fan. So I got these, even though I don't wear them that often, but this is Victor Cruz's trainer with Nike that he made. So oh, like, wow. I just kind of have this and then it kind of reminds me of New York because obviously like the Timberland sort of thing. So like it's something that I just kind of hold on to. So like the Jordan, like they're on 33 now. So I'm not going to have like 33 Jordans in the house. So a lot of that, that stuff is here. This is one of the most, the cool things that I like, just the Dornbecker program, just telling that, telling the stories. And the kids, way, like, yeah. yeah, these kids and like again, just like the way they tell those stories and like I, I, I like you said the story, but also that there's like a conscious, not just about like I've got the most money, I, you know, he who dies with the most toys wins. Yeah. That there is this thing. By the way, I'm trying to act really cool. I'm not going to make you unbox this one too, but there's also cinnamon toast crunch vibes. <laughs> that is so sick, Kyrie. You are a goddamn genius, sir. Then like I'm a big video games fan, so this is like Sonic the Hedgehog. They did some stuff with uh, with Puma. I think that the current sneaker culture and the collaboration culture also allows for like brands that people kind of slept on, like New Balance, Asics, like even me. I never messed around with Asics until like Extra Butter started doing their stuff with them, yeah, yeah. and Ronnie Feig started doing stuff with them, and all of a sudden like, oh, Asics is is the new hotness. Then oh, finally one that I could say I have that. Yeah, yeah. I have the Platinum Vapor Max. <laughs> the Vapor Max. Okay, here. this oh, is this is my cool card. This is the one thing that I have. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everything else here, no. Those were like my travel shoes for a long time, just oh, because word? they're so light. And what are you traveling now? Uh, right now I travel in either just like the Jordan ones or with the Nike Epic React, just because they're super lightweight. They have that fly knit upper mm -hmm. and then the soft and then you can just like slide them on and off when you're on the plane. It's a pair of sweats, compression socks, black v-neck because eating while sitting down for a long period of time is a highly unnatural act. But I used to always rock the um, undefeated ballistic dunks and then I just switched over to the undefeated boost because they're easy to slip off you even if they're still laced. Off. I love that you know this, all this stuff. Like a lot of people don't recognize that like a lot of people outside of the sneaker world are still sneakerheads. They just have other careers and like 100%. they don't, they're not on, on Instagram or on social flexing. So just for you to just be like, yeah, the undefeated, like, yeah. So those are the Kobe Pro Trail ones. Well, I've always appreciated this. And, and I said this to anyone watching the channel too, that I think that you really capture, not just this is made of Velcro, this is made of 3M or whatever, that you actually get that story and you point those, those elements out. But I think that's the thing that, you know, you have, the ability to express yourself through shoes and that yeah. was what i loved about the j1 that you'd see guys from skid row 
the old uh, sort of pop metal band Skid Row rocking them, and then yeah. you would see them rappers wearing them and stuff like this, and Adidas shell toes, and and also things that I've never seen before. What's that with the W on the back? The Puma. Puma did a collab with the uh, with the WWE. Does that say Macho Man on the laces? Yo, bro. T T F O H, my friend. No way. Came oh with, yeah. Came with the kicks. Then oh yeah, on the inside. Macho Madness run wild. Oh, that is unbelievable. Yeah, what are your grails? Do you have them even? So like the Jordan 11 is obviously is one of the just like my favorite shoes. The Jordan 1 is one of my favorite shoes. Jordan 3, like shell toes and then Converse Chuck Taylors are one of my favorite shoes. When I was young, I felt like the Chuck Taylor represented like the rock star to me. Like when I like, I felt like all the rock people that I saw on stage, they had on like Chuck Taylors and like mm -hmm. torn up pants. And like, so like Chuck Taylors was always like, that's the cool shoe you get when you're a rock star. The Atmos, the Camo Air Max, like that is a grail to me. The yeah, SB yeah. Statue of Liberty. Cause it's amazing to me what you have to think that there are things that even are unattainable or hard to attain for you i'd be interested to know what they were yeah i mean things are still I, that's what i try to tell people all the time like i i'm definitely blessed to have this but there's stuff that's definitely unattainable to me stuff that i don't have actually this was this was one that i did i had never really got into pro kids what? but they did they did this one um and it's after the louisville slugger and they used like the actual leather from like um from a, a, a glove oh, um, that's sick. on the upper. And so like, this was one that always kind of stood out to me. And like, I was super happy that I was able to get. Bear brick dunk low. Oh man. So I go with the denim and like, so this is like something that's really dope, but I, I don't want to wear them. Cause it's like, the pack is the so pack beautiful. The pack is so beautiful. And getting a pair of these is almost impossible. Tell me this is about Wiley e. Coyote and Roadrunner. Yeah, so this <laughs> Shut the front door. What? Yeah, yeah. So this is a, com what? a, a collab that Converse did with Looney Tunes. Came with, obviously, the movie. And then we have the, the Michigan, Michigan J. Frog. Frog WWWB. Yeah. This is Bugs Bunny. So I came with the Bugs Bunny print on it. If it's like, I want to celebrate food, I can do that. If I want to celebrate a video game, yep. a cartoon, a moment in time, you know what I think? Like the DMP, that's the thing. So anyone, you know, if you if, you're, if your parents are giving you some grief, like, and I'm 45 and my mom's still like, more shoes. The first shoe mom gave me props on was the King, I'm big Pusha T fan as an MC and as a designer, as, yep. a, as an entity. Uh -huh. I have a pretty good, Eugh. The ones that came in the black bag, yeah, from Adidas, the from cocaine Adidas. scented yeah, bag, yeah, yeah, yes. Yeah. Oh, this love is an alligator. Oh, and the tongue is on a bias. It's not. That's lovely. Oh yeah, it's uh, it's King Push. Is never gonna push a T who sings about dealing yay and the bag smelled like cocaine. She's like, no, I didn't need to know that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, keep that, keep that to yourself. You could have held on to that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Over shit. All right, I got one last thing. Since I know you're Please. an MC, there's one last thing I'm gonna show you. Oh my god. So this is probably one of the craziest packages I have ever received. Oh my god. So it's a turntable. Yeah, it's a DJ crate. It came with like a turntable. No. And a record. So there was like beats on here. I forgot the name of the producer. So they had the producer make beats. Came with like a charger. Came with like these camo NMDs. Just kind of sitting there, yeah, yeah. And then obviously it came with the shirt and then a speaker so you could listen to the beats. It's like a Bluetooth sort of uh, turntable, but just, oh my God. but just insane. I just want to shout out to uh, my man Jerry Ferraro, fellow Brooklynite, fellow sneakerhead with a pocket much deeper than my own. I'm sure you have this, but I'm, I'm. This is my inner Jerry Ferraro moment. This is yeah. my today. I am turtle. This is Vern's threes. So uh, we were just talking our mutual yeah. friend Vern Troyer. He actually rocked those. Yeah. So we did we did an unboxing on my channel and uh, before he passed, and then these are the threes that I gave him. Wasn't he just the most yeah. wonderfully sweet man? Yeah, just super, super chill, super good guy. Yeah, Humble. definitely, definitely miss him. Yeah, I miss you very much. What is the thing, if you had to like crystallize it, is there one thing you can say that like, what you love like about shoes? Like if there's like, I do this because? Well, it, for me, it started with basketball. So I just loved, I just loved basketball so much and shoes were such an integral you part of basketball. I used to, I used to. I think that kind of is what led me into it. And then it, I just kind of fell in love with one the technology and then I fell in love with the storytelling around it even like the way it's like I remember having like 
Kareem Sheltos as a kid and like Stan Smith's and it was just about putting a picture on it yeah. but now this like evocation of the person yeah. of the identity of the person that I think is really really special that but that's I think is so great and I always love that you celebrate it and I think that that's the other thing too that regardless of race regardless of background you can have sneakerheads from all over the world yep. you know shout out to my friends at Foot Patrol in London yep. I know they just did a collaboration uh, with ASICS not too long ago but again it, I could walk into a store in London, walk into a store in Australia, walk into a store in Japan, and the passion is the same, even if the language isn't, the background yep. isn't. But I can't thank you enough for showing me the treasure trove. I really, it's oh, like, sure. how are you going to keep them on the farm once they've seen Jack Slade's storage facility? Yeah. Again, no for the new Jacks me. like me, this is a big, a big deal. So I can't thank you enough for, for sure. the trust and for for bringing me into the fall this is awesome man. yeah you are you are the keeper of the secrets now. okay you are, the the, word. you are the keeper of the secrets Loves the word so that was blindfolded on the way here yeah, come on you already know i appreciate it thank you man sure, thank you sure. all right so you guys know where he is on twitter and instagram uh probably shouldn't say this but he raps he's got bars uh so you guys tweet him and tell him to rap <laughs> with some bars all right we appreciate you guys uh checking out the storage unit and you know maybe we'll do some more videos from the storage unit you know adam's opened up the treasure trove so we'll see you guys Peace. i'm staying i'm just kidding yeah